Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Electra B. I'm out on a stroll, enjoying myself. And I wanted to quickly share some thoughts on this concept that nothing can by any means hurt or harm you. And the duality in that, where we have all experienced, and you may be experiencing now, something that is harmful to you. You may have seen something harmful done to another person. And so I want to share some thoughts on this. And I would love you to share any gems in the comments for me. And just for um, just the rest of us who are on our incredible journey, pursuing a life that is more abundant, where we feel more abundant on the inside, we feel more abundant when we're at our jobs, we feel more abundant when we're in our careers, we feel more abundant in relationships, we feel more abundant when we're in nature. <sighs> I feel so abundant when I'm in nature. Yeah, and so the way it works with creation and I want to point out this specific way things work with creation as it pertains to the content and context of what I'm sharing because there are lots of different ways that things work with creation, with all of creation that is constantly in this place of anticipating an opportunity to birth something into the natural experience for you. It's a beautiful universe. It's a song, it's a harmony. And it's meant to be sang beautifully. And you know in songs when you have those notes where it seems like an off note, but something about it and its offness was right to you. In some ways, I imagine this is what maybe an Alicia Keys was experiencing in her beautiful journey that she shared publicly um, through socials and different things about her life. But when she created her album songs in, I think it was A minor. Man, A minor? But it was something about the mi the minoring, right? It's something about being a jack of all trades. It's something about allowing yourself to continue to pursue the journey of growth in earth school. And so the way creation um, is conspiring with you on a regular basis, and I talk a lot about getting into the kingdom on my YouTube Real House of Electra B. And so you'll kind of understand my lingo a little bit better if you watch some of those videos about the kingdom. But since we're all here for an experience, an experience that we can only have in this natural form, because when we unzip this form, <laughs> right? We're just like anything else without its form. Have you ever thought about what the tree is like on the inside? What it's been like to likewise have experience after experience after experience, what we could call a lifetime. It's like the expression when someone says, man, that seems like a lifetime ago. It's kind of like that what it's like for the tree to give off that photosynthesis to experience the different things that have happened with the tree right we we do so much amazing things with the tree but it was never about cutting the tree down or not cutting it down we understand that you know sometimes you lose some that's just part of the cycle of life you have to release and some stuff you have to let go, right? There's always this pruning that's happening in our mind, will, and emotions where we're saying, you know what? Thinking like that has not been helpful for the last few years. You know what? Being at that place has not been helpful. 
for the last few years in this area. You know what? Being connected with that person hasn't been beneficial. And, you know, if it's if it's not an asset, then it becomes something that is draining you. And if you have a lot to give, that can feel okay for a certain amount of time. But then it's like at some point you have to stop and allow that horse to drink from that water. And so it's so amazing to think of the concept that it was never about us making paper or making pencils. I mean, after all, Jesus Christ was a carpenter. <sighs> During a time where they understood trees and the earth and the land in a, a way that we don't uh, collectively but it's so beautiful we have so many leaders that we have access to now where we can now understand more about the land understand more about these certain things because that's their functionality and our body of humanity and so it was never about, and I gotta give you guys this view, but yeah, it was never about cutting down the tree. We need the wood to burn for the fire, right? That was always the way, but it was about the intention on the inside. It was about the feeling we had when we worked. We, because we had so much to love in life, when we would go to work, it didn't feel like, oh, I gotta go to work. Oh, I'm off of work. <laughs> it felt like life. It felt like this is what I'm choosing to do with the 24 hours that I have because there's a time that comes when I won't be able to work at something, to give something, to practice something, to teach something. And every feminine part in every body form desires to teach the proverb that it came here to share. And so, yeah, the tree's like, hey, it's an honor for me to be used in the same way, me, as a tree, I say the same thing. It's an honor for me to be used, right? But for the right reasons on the inside, meaning I know I got to be used, but man, don't hit me hard like that where you're taking out your anger on me unless you want to tell me that, hey, I need someone to help me process my anger. Then I can be ready to know, okay, when you hit me and you cut me down, it might hurt a little bit, but faithful are the wounds of a friend. And so, just back to what I was saying about the excitement of being in the kingdom. So, I'm going to give you an example. Take, I don't know if you can hear... I'm in Los Angeles and the alarm is going off. So because I allowed that to catch my attention, it, it caught my attention in a mind state that I currently am not consciously and presently in because I'm consciously presently making this video for you. But it's the same idea we have when all of us have gotten home and we have no idea how we got there. And I'm not talking about a Tesla, okay? Because I have friends who do that too. <laughs> where they're like, listen, I don't know how I got home, but my Tesla does, right? Respect. But no, I'm talking about like when you're driving, but your mind, you are literally somewhere else. But because the body is programmed. This is why in scripture when it talks about the lamb was slain before the foundations of the world. So everything in our book is to give us clues and hints to remind us of why we're here, why we chose to be here, and why we're here for a good time, not a long time, because we're transitioning into something different. And that's what we've always done. But in the same way, again, like how the tree, all of these lifetimes, 
So as long as I've been on the earth, I've seen trees. As long as I've been coming to this place, and it's been many years, because I love this place, I have seen this tree. And so it has maintained its form as a tree, or maybe I should say it's maintained its likeness, but it's changed in its form in the way it's fashioned itself. Like me, I do different fashion, maybe you. You know, maybe you used to be skinny and now you're bigger and you like it. Maybe, you know, um, you used to be bigger and you're skinny and you like it. And so it's just changing like the form and the fashion. It's changing the religiousness about you because you are true religion at its finest. And so nothing can by any means hurt or harm me because there is nothing on this planet in your experience designed to do that. It just it just isn't possible because the root of the one energy source is just one spirit. And I know that spirit well enough on many different uh, rooms in the mansion of the mind of God that I have found safety in through the blood of Jesus Christ. So understanding that I have a new bloodline, that even if the bloodline I came in with doesn't accept me, or maybe I don't feel accepted. So if the energy of, of that is there in that bloodline, then there's an experience similar to how we see in the natural where people who, whatever happens in their bloodline, maybe it wasn't accepted to have a kid by that race. Maybe it wasn't accepted to have a kid at that age. Maybe it wasn't accepted to have a kid in that way. And so whatever reason the energy of not being accepted was there, that kid became an orphan. But then there was somebody that wanted to accept who that kid was. And so when we talk about being brought into the bloodline of Jesus Christ, this is a bloodline that he cultivated. It's a soul tribe and it was a lot of people who had been rejected by their original bloodline for a lot of different reasons but mostly because of like I mean, man it's a lot to be said about that but competition um if you can process what we see in the beginning of our book with Cain and Abel. So these are characters. Uh, they're acting out what we would consider like a movie. So you know how people do, like the Rotten Tomatoes, how they do analysis on the movies. Or a person on uh, socials will do an analysis on a person's singing voice. It's a similar thing. And so... Um, that this was the way we did it 2022 years ago and so to communicate what was happening collectively what we were trying to understand in our mind because it was a lot of people on the earth besides just you know um the people in each religious group's book but each book is trying to communicate spiritually something to the part of you that is um, mostly your mind, will, and emotions. It's trying to communicate a remembrance of who you are as your God self, who you are as one that is not separated from anything, but most definitely not separated from God because God is spirit and the very proof that, that God is on the inside of you is the fact that you can look in the mirror 
and see the reflection of you and likewise understand that you're not even seeing you that you can look at a picture of you and say wow this is what people see when they look at me but then know that you are so much more and you find that so much more when you spend time observing your thoughts and observing your feelings and doing it kind of like a bee where some it may be kind of stingy but it's gonna produce some honey it may be you know a little bitter when it goes down but man when it flushes out like you ever had a really good bowel movement anyway i digress and so i was telling you about the blood so yeah like it's it's a way to um in the psyche in conjunction with um the spirituality that you're currently developing and so it's hitting your mind and your heart it's a knowing it's a belief because a belief is essentially a thought that you have rehearsed enough times where you believe it without having to really think a whole lot about it and so it's it's a belief that wow now I have a different blood type I still have the same blood type as, you know, all of humanity and that type of thing. But it's like the expression when we would say, oh, yeah, but we're blood. It didn't mean because everyone has the same blood. We're we're humanity, right? (laughs) But it was an expression that we used to say, like, what we've because blood thicker than water in some of its origins it came from a place where we were learning that spending time with each other it was alchemizing like it was stirring something up on the inside it was we were able to be more vulnerable with each other and we understood chemically what was happening and how to alchemize that between like the masculine and feminine energies and everything, right? I mean, it's so much to be said about that too that I will maybe share at another time. But yeah, all that to say, it's it's where you get to know in your mind and imagination that, hey, I do have family out here. I do have like blood relatives. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's that, it's that concept. It's like being around people where it's like, man, you feel like family to me, even though by definition of what we have all used to define family as, I can't say you're that, but from the inside of the belief system, I'm now forming in my psyche and in my emotional space. And that's where I'm learning what my truest definition of family is, what my truest definition of love is, what my truest definition, um, and that's mostly what I share uh, with you um, when I do these videos, but I I also like to share um, just collective views, just being a certified chaplain and having my master's in religious studies and being a certified Christian counselor. I'm just... I've been privileged to work with so many different types of people and there's so much love and respect and honor. And so, um, (laughs) so yeah, so, but as I'm ending, let me, um, let me quickly finish. Okay. So I'm going to give you a personal example from my life to try to wrap up the point that I'm making that there's nothing here that can by any means hurt or harm you and that you are actually here just to learn, to learn in this experience and not to have to learn in a bad way. But it's similar to, I don't know if you grew up like around some of the older saints that would grab your ear or grab your cheek and, you know, or, you know, just pull on you. And it was love. It wasn't like grabbing it because it's like, oh my good, oh, look at the little, you know. (laughs) 
and it's like it doesn't feel good when she squeezes my cheeks but it's like that kind of thing right the painful experiences in life are supposed to mirror that example so what a little kid could be feeling because mind you the little kid is still smiling and the little kid might be thinking why is she doing that but it's not the feeling uh, or the energy that's fueling that spiritual experience of pain, of anger, or rage, right? Because it's not hurt there with that pain. Um, <laughs> it would be another way to say faithful are the wounds of a friend. And so um, there's this place that I frequent often. And I grew up in a time where people really stepped out in faith to trust others you know and it's always a risk to put yourself out there and be vulnerable in love but obedience is better than sacrifice and sacrifice you know is a beautiful thing as well because that's a part of love but a mature love has like this discipline in it but it's a discipline it's cultivated within itself that then it's able to give to another because we only meet each other in as much as we've met ourselves and so there's a place that I frequent and I grew up in a time where people wouldn't uh, if they forgot to lock their doors or something it wasn't a big deal <laughs> You know, it was just kind of this trust in the overall process of what was unfolding in the kingdom of their life during that day. So meaning what's happening on the outside of your life today. So tonight, what I want you to do after your day is all done, I want you to sit down and I want you to go back in your imagination and play as many pockets of your day as you can and see yourself. Because mind you, a lot of people saw you, but you didn't see you. And meditation is the process of finding you, seeing you, and being with you. And, and getting more and more comfortable with that. And now, when you do this, first thing I want you to know is everything you did today, when you go back through your day, was what you were already planned to do. So your body... And everything physically around you, so the outside part of you, because there's an inside part of you that is one with the Spirit of God, and then there's an outside thing that we're always experiencing, right? Um, yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I want you to see how you were a participant in whatever was going to happen whatever happens this day it was planned to happen but you don't remember the plan because you, you filled your mind with other things that you're remembering and then being like I don't need that memory anymore <laughs> right but the Holy Spirit brings all things to, to your remembrance regarding your plan and you know everything that has been commanded and just branded you know um, over your heart for this experience and so I just want to take a moment and say loud on that that was beautiful and so when you go back and you look at your day whatever happened today it was meant to happen on this day you could not control that. Now, the part you're playing is what's happening in here when said things are happening and what's happening in here. Okay? This is the duality. Um, but really, it's like the... I call it like the ecosystem of the kingdom because there's this spiraling happening because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But there is both a consciousness in the mind and a consciousness in the heart space. This is why Christ is knocking at both places. We take the, you know, we're imitating God we, and we're pursuing the mind of Christ 
another fun way to say that is Christ consciousness. And then also we're pursuing the revelation of how to get that same Christ consciousness in the heart space. And it is a beautiful experience that I'm enjoying more and more. And so um, you get to see how you participated in the kingdom. Now keep in mind, everything in the plan is designed to prosper you. Nothing is designed to, to hurt or harm you. Nothing is. Who would, we don't plan dates for horrible experiences. No one does that. No one's like, I'm going to plan a date to go to the beach and I'm going to make my beach experience the worst beach experience I can have. I want to be so mean and angry at the beach. I want to, I want to look like this at the beach the whole time. I mean, everyone has to sit there, right? If your day is designed, kingdomly speaking, to be at the beach on today, along with all of the other wonderful people who, likewise, it was in their plan to be at the beach on today. Everybody's got to sit there. What you choose to do with your face, your lips, everything is planned to be there. My lips are here. Why not do this with my lips? I, I like the way it feels when I do this with my lips. I have to do something with my lips while I'm talking to you. And so, again, this is how we are co-laboring with Christ. And so, I want you to see how you participated in your mind and your imagination and how you participated in your heart space with what was planned for today and then maybe try it tomorrow. Now this is how you get childlike. This is one of the ways that I talk about how to get childlike and get into the kingdom. And so all that to say, I frequent this place and I'm of the type where it's like, oh, if I forget to, you know, lock my doors, it's not that big of a deal. I want to make sure I remember to do it next time because it's what has been collectively established as the formality. And I honor that because I honor creation. I honor the universal song, what we are deciding as a collective human mind, you know, how we want to move in the same way we decided, hey, we're not going to be doing that kind of stuff to other humans anymore. And the way we continue to decide that. And so, <laughs> um, let's say la there. And so if something did happen and I knew that I had forgot to lock my door, but I knew that my intention was trust, and then whatever happened, I would be more curious to see, ooh, like again, a movie, like what I was saying about Cain and Abel, how in each book, so each book has a Cain and Abel. I know those names because that's the uh, book I love. Uh, that's the book that I know very well. That is the spirit that I carry. I am that book. And so, um, but... As I've coached with others, um, being a certified chaplain and a certified Christian counselor, I have heard and been able to identify the spirit, the energy, the essence from um, hearing the characters in other stories. And so that's why I can tell you um, that I know this to be true. And so I would have been more curious to see, man, what part of my story am I in? So with Cain and Abel, they were acting out an energy type that was very common, that was seen between the masculines. And so we have like, and it's telling a whole story, but it's because we didn't do films the way we do films now, right? Because that was 2022 years ago. We didn't have cars back then either, or airplanes, you know? <laughs> We have really come a long way and we're continuing to grow. And I'm so proud of us. And so 
Let's say loud on that. <laughs> And so it would be similar to how someone is showing you a movie today of like a type of woman, a type of man and, you know, the type of lifestyle they would have and then how their love life would be and how their love life could get better. And then you look at it and you're like, I see myself in that. It's because you're identifying with the spirit. You're, you're, um, seen yourself this is actually how you see yourself so I know I mentioned the mirror but when you're seeing yourself with your spiritual eyes um, it's very popular in culture uh, the term third eye and some of the origins of that term third eye came when some of our spiritual scholars and scribes uh, recognize that they were perceiving something with more than their first two eyes so it's like <laughs> it's like one two three though because it came from my imagination but then the more we learned in our imagination the way we're perceiving that's why in Old Testament and then New Testament you know you've got Yeshua the Christ repeating it uh, where the prophet said these people are forever, you know, hearing but never understanding, right? They're forever seeing but never perceiving because if they did see with their eyes and hear with their ears, you know, they would turn and be healed. Things would be different, right? And so we call it a third eye because now in culture, the, collectively, there are enough minds that are are willing to dive more into the different paradigms of what that could mean but I wanted you to know in some of the origins it just came because we were like oh one two three but there's actually a four one um to be quite honest with you you have eyes all over when John was prophesying about that he he was seeing different dimensions um in the way we do when we prophesy today uh, but he was tapping into, I mean, he was, he was really seeing far. He was seeing like, uh, airplanes, you know, how, uh, the eyes on a plane. Uh, but he was also seeing like, um, I mean, at a very deep level or, I mean, it's a wide level too. It's just a, it's a more mastered level. We learn that we actually have eyes all over us and the eyes are actually reflecting from the inside and so we're we're looking at others but that's how we're playing the game but in reality we're here for the duality of it for both the spiritual spiritual aspect and the natural aspect of it and so in the physical, when you're looking at someone, they're reflecting something back to you. And that's why you think something in your mind and you feel something in your heart. But on a spiritual experience, when you're feeling and thinking in your heart, those are the eyes that are all around you that are looking in for the revelation to try to create a better experience for you here in the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, the invisible place. Right, the, the same place that you'll re realize that you're at right now when you're not as used to playing in the mindset that tells you, all right, I got to go to work today and I got to, no, I mean, you, you, you got to go and you get to go, but pay attention to what happens because it's like your personal movie unfolding. So again, I was getting to this point and I guess I'll keep walking a little bit more, <laughs> but I was getting to the point of how I, um, I, you know, I grew up around people who, these are people, they didn't lock their doors, okay? These, are, these were people like the people in scripture where you see those ones who are just bringing what they had. They just freely gave what they had because it was just so much love 
And then the people who also freely had other things to give, other resources, they freely gave what they have and what they had. And so then there was no area that was lacking because everyone was playing their part in the body. The, the, the body is, um, in some, that term can mean a lot of different things, a body of water, um, a, a group of people, right? And so that was a term that we really enjoyed using in spiritual ways. And that's why we call us the body of Christ, because we understood we were Christian, we were a big family. So this is before social media where you can meet someone who believes like you on the other side of the world, right? We wouldn't meet each other that often. You know, it, it wasn't that easy. We had to plan out when we were going to meet, right? So we were calling ourselves the body of Christ, the body of believers, right? Because we recognize that, hey, we got some people in the group that are arms. Please reach as far as you can because we need your reach. And those fingers and those nails, we need that. We need all that, right? I mean, every part of what everyone had to offer because it's such a beautiful experience to be in a body of people, to be in a community of people where like no one has to overextend themselves. So then there's a beautiful spiral. There's this beautiful spiritual ecosystem that is happening in the collective heart and the collective mind of that collective body. And so, um, in my story, if something happened that quote unquote could be deemed as a bad experience to um, someone who has a mindset that whatever happened to me is something that sucks, right? Then I would want to think about it in a way that would make me because either way, whatever happened, happened. I can't undo it. That's the physical part of this experience. The physics of it helps us to understand it in the scientific part of our mind that we likewise need so we can be well-rounded in our evolution, our evolving of just being better versions of ourselves, first for ourselves and then for the people around us. And so, There is nothing per se bad that can happen because when it's all said and done, so like when the whole thing has played out, you see that it worked out for the good of not even just you, of everyone. Because the more it plays out in your mind, in your heart, the more you allow yourself to have those eyes on the inside to see. And, and man, when you sit down at the table with Christ, you really get to see in a different way. And this happens when you allow him into your heart space. And it's the revelation of the intimacy with him. And he is a deity he can be explained in a lot of ways, but I enjoy explaining from uh, different paradigms just to get your wheels turning because he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Uh, this, this expression and some of its original origins was coming from people who were so mastered in their spiritual place where they understood the dynamics and it's because they, they learned from, you know, some of the ancient astrologers. I mean, I would... People are always like, you know, who would you, if you could talk to anyone from the past, anyone that's transitioned, who would it be? I would love to sit down with all three of those astrologers that found the Christ in baby form. I would love to learn what they learned about the land in conjunction with the 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 stars in conjunction with the animals, the birds up high, you know, the creatures down low, 
and 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 the way I mean it's just so it's so fascinating anyway <laughs> I would be that would be an amazing experience and what's beautiful about that is I could actually create I could create that experience on a lot of levels I could create it in my imagination and that's a level that most people feel um, comfortable indulging in and talking about. I could create it in a daydream form. That's another way. I'm using my mind and my heart. And it's happening on the inside of me. Now, if I started to do that consistently, then I could maybe make a vision board about it. And as long as what, whatever I did, and as long as I kept my reason on the inside of my heart and my mind pure to the God in me, pure to that voice that is only going to be there with me at the very end of the night, when I think back of who I chose to be on a day that I will never see again. That's the God part of you. And there are a lot of different ways to explain the God part of you. And, um, there are a lot of teachers that explain it in the way that Jesus said it in scripture. Um, and I enjoy that. And again, I just, I also enjoy, like I enjoy it. Like I do it enjoy to give you other ways to think about things. And so if I, if I continue to do all of these things that others share, making vision boards and all of that, um, I may get to a place where I'm dreaming about it. If I continue to do these things, because this is what it looks like to hunger and thirst for righteousness. This is why Yeshua the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, he could say, you're blessed when you feel like you don't know. When you feel like you're going crazy, you don't feel, you're blessed. You're yeah, like you're blessed when those things are happening, when when people are persecuting you and it's like, oh, this is bad part of your story is happening because it makes the movie good. So you've got to be like, hmm, that was planned in my day. I should have been in a different mind, probably one more childlike. I should have been in a more childlike mind that maybe the mindset that makes me feel comfortable in myself and around the people I'm around that day pretending to be a detective right it's whatever way of being feels comfortable to you on the inside to be with yourself and whoever you're going to be around during the day so like me and my friends you know um <laughs> sometimes we'll be silly and we'll just talk in a different accent and because we've done it enough times, it is not weird to just all of a sudden go into an accent no matter where we are. We could be in a restaurant and we just go into an accent and like say it just like this. If I just decided to talk in an accent, listen, this is what I want you to do. If you're practicing getting into the kingdom and you want to practice being childlike in agreement with me, write something down in the comments, but write it in like how someone who does not speak the English language as their first language, meaning this is not the origins of their original understanding of expression, definition, and just the word. Because I want you to understand that, that the word is plural. The word means different things. And so as you can see, like my accent has just changed. And so like what I'm trying to say is that like when I'm around my friends and we talk, like if I just jumped into talking like this or whatever, and like say it just put me in like this mood where I just want it to be like, just like a little airheady, you know, like how we see those characters. Then I could just start doing it around my friends. And you know what? It gives them permission to get into a character too. And so what I want you to do is I want you to take anything you want to say, put it in the comments, but write it in a way where like how a person who English isn't their first language would maybe spell something differently. We see that um, a lot 
uh, with people who grew up in certain areas, they use Z. A person that grew up in other areas, they use S, right? Tomato, tomato. It's like we're listening not to be like, hey, you didn't say that right, but to be like, oh, I get what, yeah, I, I, I get what they're trying to say. Makes sense to me, in my mind, in my heart, and that's always the goal, right? And so, because what they're saying makes sense to them, and they're just trying to say it in a way as best as they can and make sense in the same way for you. And so, I enjoy, I in joy thinking about things differently and so I gave you the example of if something bad happened quote unquote bad you know but this is why we don't even it's kind of like the more we realize how life works where things okay yeah I was down and out but then I wasn't anymore man yeah I got to a really low place but I just kept going and people helped me and I learned how to help myself more and then I just wasn't there anymore and that's always how life is going to be for you and the more you get childlike in the experiences that are happening and you allow yourself to laugh at yourself you allow yourself to be silly and vulnerable again you begin to see life in the way that you saw life in the beginning when you came here when you first came here in your physical experience, <laughs> you didn't have a problem touching yourself. Even though the other similar kinds around you, they had different forms, you know, right? Some of them, their branches had, you know, a lot of, some hair was thick, you know, some hair was just kind of curly and like fine. You know, but like, it's all hair. And it's all good hair. Because everything, every tree is offering, even though its form and fashion may look different, the energy, the spirit, the essence of every tree, the photosynthesis, etc., 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 is coming from each one, which is really a, a bigger tree of life and um, what it really is um, in, in some of its origins of expression that I'm seeing now it looks like a big electrical system um, so it's like the trees all come together in this wiring where they're able to collectively in the body of treehood make sure hey you know everybody doing okay on the inside everybody still enjoying giving grace to the humans you know thank you for spitting on me it's the it's coming to the place that's similar in scripture or you know when the dog pees on the tree the tree you know the essence of the tree is like thank you for you know peeing on me because the dog is doing it because of its kind and there's nothing bad about it and then the human person that's peeing on the tree you know it depends on uh, what's going on on the inside of, of them in their mind and their heart space some pee, you know it's just about the intention we we pee different places for different reasons right some people you know are of the body of you know my kind and or my form and fashion and you know you might pee in water that may be the shower that may be the ocean Right? And then there's some people who would never think about, they would never think about pain in the shower. But going back to, you know, being childlike, you ain't had no problem peeing in your mama daddy face. And it wasn't bad. It was just part of what you were experiencing in your little mind, which was really the mind you have now. Um, but you were in a little body. But it was the same big soul in a little body. So I guess, you know, you know, but it's kind of like how we say, man, you're such an old soul. But it, then there's the duality of remembering that 